today's segment, we're going to start calling these segments Catherine on the Couch. Uh, it's just an explanation of different things. And today it's going to be about mixed media. Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Cash and Mere Designs. If you are new, please do subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss out on any of my new videos with my new tips and tricks because you're going to love them. Now, many people don't know what mixed media is and it's very, very simple. Mixed media is taking different mediums, so whether it is watercolor painting, whether it is oil painting, acrylic painting, sketching, drawing, gluing, decoupaging, anything goes here. You can bring in digital media. You can bring in whatever you want. It is a case of bringing a multitude of mediums, making it mixed media art. Now, what I'm going to do is show you an example of some of the mixed media art that I have done. And this particular piece is broken down. It's incomplete. So you can see the different things individually that I've actually done. Here it is. Ta-da! I hope you can all see it from head to toe. Now, I'm going to take this out for a second. And I'm going to show... Ooh, balance it over there. Okay. So what I've got over here, this is mostly paperwork. This is a print I did of Frida Kahlo. So I did edit it on the computer to get the colors a bit different. And then I just printed it out and it's basically just glued straight on. On top of that, I have some vintage wallpaper over here, which I found on an old wardrobe that I was recycling. And I pulled off all the paper and I've kept it. And that's a piece over there. The next bit over here, these are little flowers that I cut out of a magazine. This over here, the whoop, one, two, three little flowers are pages of an old soft cover romantic novel. And I basically drew onto them. So that's the next type of medium that I'm bringing in is I drew onto them with pens and then I just faded it a bit with water and I stuck those on. In the background here, and on top of Frida, there is some painting that I've done. So now that's bringing in, these are just wall paints, acrylic paints that I've used on this particular piece. The piece of wood itself, I've done a little bit of staining, not very much because it is incomplete. It does need more staining, it needs more finishing. The next element of this particular piece is this over here. Now this is twofold. This is stencil work but it's raised stencil, so it's thicker, and it's got a lovely texture to it. Now, if I were to complete this piece, this would kind of go all over a bit more. I would stain on top of it. I would add a multitude more things, but I've left it deconstructed for the purpose of this video. Now, as I also do upcycling and recycling and all these things, which will be another video, make no mistake, I have basically just drilled two little holes here. I used a piece of wire that I had lying around the house. I bent it up at the back. Whoop, there you go. And this becomes a little pot holder. So that's the plant that goes in there. So I think that's adding to mixed media. And then these are just my little hooks for my car keys. Normally there's a lot more hooks on here, you can imagine. But this just gives you a basic idea of what mixed media is. Now you can add so many more things to this and I'm going to just show you a couple of other things. So let me pop that down there. Out of the way. All right, so let's go into some of the mediums that I personally use. Now I do work a lot with this particular range, which is Bormavax. Um, it's made in Italy. It is a wood range. I will lift up to show you in a second. Um, and I get it locally from a store called Modelli. I am not sponsored by them at all. I just really love the service that they give me. And I love the products because there's such a range of products within this one brand. Now, this is an oil stain. So I can use this to stain my wood. I can use this to stain over paper. 
don't be afraid and this is what's great about mixed media and I will show you when I do a full tutorial um you can mix oil things with water things it just you can do what you want so this is a stain that I've used in a lot of my products it's great because in a lot of my artwork it ages things stains always do that Along the same lines, I have from the same brand, it's a wax. So this is this particular wax is also a brown wax. They come in different colors. They come in clear. They come in gold. There's a bunch of different ones from this brand. And again, it actually seals in a product. So you could use it at the end. You don't have to. You can use products in different ways. But this is another thing I use. So I've got waxes. I've got stains. I have chalk paint, which I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with what chalk paint is. Um, and it's great. You can put it on, you can sand it off, you can dilute it for a white, uh, a watery effect. You can actually paint with it. I do a lot of paintings with it, not just flat painting on furniture. So that's another one. Again, a multitude of colors. Um, then I use enamels as well because they give that sort of glossy look that you could use to outline something and i will use all of these products on one piece of artwork no problem don't limit yourself so that's an enamel um, and then this is a water-based enamel i do love this for other types of artwork which we will talk about at a later stage i do drawings and various things and this is a great base these water-based enamels okay Let's move on to a few other things. Then what I was showing you on the print is, on the piece of art is paper. This is just printed at my local stationery shop. This tiger is an image I liked and it's something I will use. Then this is a book. I will tear the pages out and use the pages in different ways. You can make leaves out of them. You can just stick them in the background. You can cut out sentences and stick the sentence across a face or whatever you feel like doing. There's so many things you can do. Draw on them, don't draw on them, up to you. Uh, this is that vintage wallpaper actually, still a piece that I have that I showed you, very moth-eaten. Other fun paper things are nautical maps. Now this is an old nautical map. You can see I've already cut it up. These are also great to work with, lots of different uses. You can cut out just the lines, you can cut out a strip, you can stain them. Instead of using tea bags and things, it's a waste of a good cup of tea. Use your wood stain and go over it, it'll age it. Um, even funny little things like this that I found, I think it's a, it's a very, very old postmaster's uh, notification. It's super, super old, I can't, 1969, how cool is that? And then I will stick on something. It may not be my memory, but it's somebody else's memory. And it just, it's cool and it's old and it's vintage. Why not? Um, then creating that texture, stencils. You can use these over and over and over. I will teach you how to use stencils and how to do raised stenciling. Super easy. I'll teach you, don't worry. I have a lot of different types of stencils. Then the other thing to create more interest, this is super tiny, so I don't know if you'll see it, but that is just a little gem. I mean, you can pick these things up on eBay for cents and you can get little things. You could shove them into the plaster when you do um, a raised stencil, push them in there, glue them in there, do what you want. Little wooden decals, it's compressed wood. You can get these in a variety of things. You can get letters, you can get images, you can get patterns, you can get anything. Go to your local hardware store or go onto eBay or Amazon. You'll find something for sure. Um, what I have, which I think is super cute, is a teeny weeny baby Jesus. So if you're not religious, don't worry about it. I am. So I like my little baby Jesus and I throw him into different artworks occasionally. Um, right. Other things that you can use, which I didn't use on this piece down here, but I do use a lot on various things, is gold leaf. Now, this is not gold, but it is the same thing. It is a green metallic, this particular one. Um, these come in a variety of colors. I will be doing a course on that as well. And there's a lot to learn about how to foil properly, um, effectively, and on different surfaces. So that's that. The other thing is, let me take you back to this for just a second. Now, on this picture, let's take our little plant out of here. 
you will see the lips, for example. Now you can't really see it from there, it's a bit tricky, but the lips, I have drawn over her lips to enhance them more. The eyes as well, because the quality of the print is pixelated. Don't worry about it. Use pixelated images. It allows you the opportunity to then draw on top of them to clarify. So for my drawing, I will show you the different things that I use. Okay, we have my box of color. I love this box. So I have chalk pens. Now these, these are all the chalk pens. My husband thought it would be great for my birthday to buy me like four boxes of chalk pens. And it was because I have so many different colors. It's fantastic. I love it. These things are great. You can draw on and you can erase them essentially because they dissolve with water. So you can either get rid of it if you've made a really bad mistake or you can leave it as a solid line or once you've drawn it, let it dry use a paintbrush and you can slowly fade out with it. So these give you a lot of variety. I use them a lot. The other things I have in this box are my little sort of fine art pens. You can get these at any stationery. You get different tips. Some are very fine. So it's good for like little details. I like to scribble sometimes in my patterns. And then you get ones um, that have a slightly thicker nib. Again, these are, I use a lot um, for drawing on outlines and things. The next are pencils. Now, I do say, this is the one thing I will say is, with regards to pencils, get a good-ish quality of pencil crown or pencil, coloring pencil. I don't know. And watercolor pencils are the best because you can go over the lines with a paintbrush to really bring out the color even more or to fade it or to do whatever, or you can just color with them. Very easy. Um, other things that I use, permanent markers. I use normal pens, just your normal everyday writing pen, black, blue, red, green. Um, I've stolen stuff out of my kids' boxes for drawing. Is there anything you can use? Now, I thought I had it with me but I think my assistant didn't put it with my things, uh, is my children's watercolor palette, basically. And it really is a kiddie's watercolor palette. And I can use that as well if I feel like it to add in a bit of different color somewhere. So I hope that's given you a slightly better understanding of what mixed media art is. Um, like I said, it's a multitude of mediums brought together. Um, and you can bring two mediums, you can bring 20 mediums. It's totally up to you. You can have fun with it. And I think the big thing to remember at the end of the day is it is about having fun. And if you don't have an artistic bone in your body, this is the artistic style for you because you can and you will create beautiful things with it. And I hope to be able to show you that in one of my next videos. So please, Subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Ciao.